Good morning guys and welcome back to my channel. So tonight I'm sharing with you an interesting concept that I came up with which is if I had to narrow my collection down to my ideal number of perfumes which would be about 20 to 25 perfumes which ones would I keep? So this is going to be grossly inaccurate because obviously it's pretty easy to choose your top 5 to 10 favorite perfumes, even 15 perfumes. Once you get to a certain number though, after that I feel like they all start to be tied and it becomes very very difficult to narrow it down because I have obviously way more than 20 perfumes. So this was extremely difficult. I would say the first top 5 to 10 were pretty easy for me to choose but after that it was kind of, I could have chose any ones. So it was really difficult for me and I'm really glad that I'm not actually cutting my perfume collection down to 20 because that would be so hard for me. I love all of my perfumes and if you guys watch my channel you know that I have shared many times that my ideal number of perfumes is about 25 maybe 30 tops however I'm starting to realize that that is not really feasible for me because it is a hobby that I love to do and I love them all so much that it's no longer feasible for me to try to reach that number of 2025 perfumes but I still think it's kind of a fun concept to ask myself if I was to narrow it down to 2025 which ones would they be so that's what we're going to be doing in today's video and if this is your first time on my channel thank you so much for stopping by my name is Alithia and on this channel we do talk mostly about perfumes so if that is your thing make sure to head on down and subscribe also feel free to head on over and follow me on Instagram if you want to see more little tidbits about my life home decor minimalism decline Cluttering, outfits of the day, scents of the day, and of course a whole bunch of perfume related content. And with that out of the way, let's get into today's video. Okay, so the first one that I grabbed you guys, and this was super instinctual. I didn't even think. I just saw this one and immediately grabbed it. This is one of my absolute favorite perfumes in my entire collection. This is Kaeli Vanilla 28. And if you guys watch my channel, you know this is one of my favorite vanillas. It's kind of a brown sugar um, vanilla orchid fragrance, and it's just a very easy grab for me. Very easy dumb reach, super easy to wear, sweet, feminine, flirty, vanilla. Um, just a really, really nice fragrance and it's yeah it's one of my favorite I'm actually trying to get a larger bottle of this one but it has been sold out on Sephora for the longest time Huda Beauty does not ship to Canada and I can't find it anywhere else so I am on a waiting list I want a 100 ml bottle of this because it's one of my faves I'm actually kind of scared to run out so yeah this was a very easy choice for me when I was choosing which ones would stay 100% Kali Vanilla 28. The next one that was a really easy reach for me is Christian Louboutin Louis Rouge and this one again is one of my favorites. This is an iris vanilla and cardamom fragrance. It's powdery, a little bit woody, very subtly like soft, soft, spicy and really sexy and makes me feel like a million bucks. One of my absolute favorites. So yeah, this was also a very, very easy reach when I was choosing what my top 20 would be so we'll stick this guy back here I'm trying to be as quiet as possible because people are sleeping and just so i don't break my tray the next one that was a really easy reach for me is alien from mugler oh, i just love it and i just love this perfume you guys still one of my favorites there's something very sultry about this this is jasmine amber and woody notes and it just smells very bossy very sexy and there's just something about it that I really, really love. I just love the scent profile. So yeah, Alien is a pretty easy reach for me. This is only, I think, a 30 ml bottle. And definitely when I run out of this one, I'm going to get a 60 ml because it's one of my faves. So why not? So we will stick him in the front somewhere because I'm going to try to space them apart properly. And um, I'm going to try to put the taller ones in the back. So the next one is Flora Botanica from Balenciaga and I just grabbed this one because it was one of the taller ones so I'm not really going in order here you guys but this is a beautiful um, kind of a green rose fragrance. It's kind of a dry green rose. There's cannabis, there's mint, there's carnation, there's vetiver I believe and I think there's amber and I'm actually going to just take the lid off and give it a smell. This is one of my, one of my top top favorite favorite summer perfumes. Mm, you guys, I love this so much. I've heard rumors that this is discontinued. I don't know if it actually is or not because it's still, you can still find it um, on different websites. This is a 100 ml bottle and 
I love it. I need to actually wear this more. I'm going to try buying fewer perfumes come this next summer and actually just cycle through and wear what I have because otherwise like the whole summer came and went and that's the dint I put in here, which is not acceptable <laughs> for such a beautiful perfume, especially a perfume that could be discontinued. I don't want, I don't want it to just sit around and not get used. Um, so I am going on a little bit of a low buy, by the way, you guys coming up pretty soon. I've accumulated a lot of new perfumes and I need to go on a low buy. So the next one should not surprise anybody. This is Delina exclusive from Parfum de Marly. And even though I don't talk about this one as much anymore in my newer videos, because I've been getting so many different perfumes, this is still one of my absolute favorite of all time. This is a vanilla woody rose fragrance and super feminine, lasts forever, amazing performance, and probably just one of the most beautiful vanillas, or sorry, well, vanillas too, but one of the most beautiful rose scents I've ever smelled in my life. Can't part ways with my Delina exclusive. It is still to this day my favorite parfum de Marly. Although I am exploring the rest of the house and trying to see if I want to bring another one into my collection, but yeah, Delina exclusive is um, definitely one I would keep if I had to narrow my collection down significantly. The next one is a longtime favorite of mine, and nobody will be surprised if you watch my channel. This is Miss Dior Eau de Parfum from Christian Dior. This is the 2017 formulation. I am not a fan of the 2021 reformulation at all. It is completely different from this one, and I think they've kind of destroyed a good thing. I think they just should have kept going with this one. I don't know why they did that, but they completely changed it, and I no longer love it. So anyways, I do have multiple backups of this one, so... I can keep it in my collection. And I need to actually give more love to this one too. It's one of my favorite perfumes. It's such an easy reach. It is a rose orange patchouli fragrance. It's sweet, very feminine, very sophisticated, very classy, really good performance. It makes me feel incredible. It makes me just feel classy and like I have my life together and it's also quite sensual, I think also quite sexy. So you could wear this for a date, you could wear this for every day. I just love it um, and I do need to this is why I'm going on a no buy or a low buy you guys because I need to start giving love to the perfumes I have and stop accumulating more and more and more <laughs> because otherwise they're never gonna get worn so Miss Dior Eau de Parfum is definitely an easy choice for me another one that was a really really easy choice and I think this was actually my second one I grabbed when I was reaching on my shelf this is Mont Guerlain from Guerlain and I love this fragrance and I honestly could have grabbed Mont Guerlain Intense as well but I do think I still enjoy this one the best the original just because this one is just so easy to wear and this is more of an everyday all the time perfume this one is a lavender vanilla with a bunch of other notes it's not just lavender and vanilla but it's one of the most beautiful lavender vanilla combinations I've ever smelled. It's very easy to wear, very relaxing, very beautiful, very feminine. I love this, you guys. I actually wore this the other day and it was my scent of the day and I just couldn't get enough of myself. <laughs> I love how I smell and how I feel when I wear this. And I decided I probably didn't need two of them in today's video. Otherwise, I very easily could have grabbed the Intense because I also really like the Intense. But I think once I use up this bottle, I'm going to get 100 ml as well. I'm gonna start buying 100 ml bottles of my favorites once I run out, just because it's more economical. Mont Guerlain is a lifer for me. Love this one. The next one is Maison Francis Kirchon Baccarat Rouge 540. And this one kind of, I think it jumps into my list because it is one of the best fragrances I think I own. It has really good um, performance. It's a really good quality perfume. It smells really good. makes me feel very bougie and luxe. Truth be told, this is not an easy reach for me, at least not yet. I think because I just have so many perfumes and I probably don't give enough attention to a lot of them. And if I was to give it more attention, I think it would become an easy reach because I enjoy wearing it and it's beautiful. So anyway, this one I had to, I had to include because it is one of the best in my collection, although it isn't a very easy reach for me. But um, Baccarat Rouge, I don't really need to tell you what it smells like. It's a sweet, um, resinous, kind of a natural smelling, luminous fragrance, very vibrant and airy and 
just a beautiful, beautiful fragrance that every time I smell this on other people, I think they smell incredible. And I hope that that's how I smell <laughs> when other people smell me with it. Another fairly easy grab for today's list. The next one that I reached for fairly quickly when I was deciding what perfumes I would keep was Killian Love Don't Be Shy Extreme. I love this perfume, you guys. This is one of my favorite, favorite perfumes in my whole collection. Again, this is not one that I wear a lot because it is very expensive. Um, $350 for a 50 ml bottle, so I don't want to burn through this. And I do save this one for more special occasions, like special dates or certain nights when I just want to smell really, really good. This is one that I reach for when I want that extra, I want to smell extra good <laughs> because it really does smell incredible. It's one of the best ones in my collection. It's very similar to the original love don't be shy but this one concentrates more on the marshmallow and the rose and it's powdery and it's sweet and it's feminine and just one of the best like one of my favorite favorite fragrances so currently the only killian i have in my collection as well so that was a pretty easy reach as well Another one that was a pretty easy reach for me is Olympia from Paco Rabanne. And this one, I still love you guys. This has been a favorite of mine since the beginning of 2020 when I first started talking about perfumes on this channel. And this was a blind purchase that I fell in love with. It was such a good purchase. My boyfriend is obsessed with it. He loves it. It's, I think it is such a sexy perfume. It's one of the, one of the easiest reaches I have for when I want to smell good, sexy, irresistible, um, feminine, whatever. It's just such a good one. And I know it's like kind of quote unquote basic. I don't really care. Sometimes the basic ones are the best ones. So yeah, this is Olympia Paco Rabanne, salty vanilla, um, just super, super delicious. Every time I smell this, I have the same reaction. I just think it smells amazing. So since we are on the topic of easy reaches and perfumes my boyfriend loves, let's talk about gold couture. So this was also a very easy reach. When I look at my date night arsenal, you guys, I have much better date night perfumes. I have much classier perfumes. I have much more sophisticated, you know, black tie event, nice evening gown, cocktail dress. I have, trust me, I have much nicer like date perfumes than this. The reason this one was a very easy reach and one that I would definitely keep is because again, it's just one of my partner's favorites. It's a no brainer dumb reach, grab and go. If I want to smell sweet, irresistible, feminine, flirty, um, this is one I, I can grab for and I can count on it being a good choice, it basically. So I really like it. Gold Couture, it's sweet, it's caramel. Um, I like it a lot. It's my favorite of the Juicy Couture range, of the Viva La Juicy range. So yeah, Gold Couture, that's got to stay. <laughs> So now for a Chanel fragrance, and this is Gabrielle Essence from Chanel. This is my new favorite Chanel fragrance, and this is a um, bubbly, happy, vibrant, upbeat floral fragrance, and this does have a little bit of a citrusy facet to it, but it has that classic Chanel DNA. It smells like a Chanel perfume. I believe this is yellow floral. I think there's white floral in here as well. It's just a very classy perfume and it's not one that every single person has. I always tell people if you're looking for a new Chanel or you don't want to wear Coco Mademoiselle because everybody else has Coco Mademoiselle, check out Gabriel Essence because I think it's modern but it's also classic and yeah, it's just a really easy to wear um, summer fragrance. So I did want some like easy spring summer perfumes that were a little lighter, a little fresher. And this is a pretty easy reach for me as well. So it's starting to look like a pretty cliche Alithia video, isn't it? <laughs> Cause I'm talking about all of my old favorites. Um, so yeah, it's repetitive, but it's the truth, right? These are some of my favorite perfumes. So this is Victor and Ralph Flowerbaum. I have had this for a very long time. Uh, this is actually out of my whole collection, I've had this perfume the longest, even longer than Miss Dior. So this I've been wearing for about six years. This is a sweet tea floral fragrance and I just absolutely love it. It's very sexy, very feminine, very easy grab and go again, a very easy reach. If I am going for a date night, spring, summer, winter, fall, it really doesn't matter. If I want to smell sexy and have good performance and just know that I'm going to smell incredible. 
this is one I reach for. Again, it's a great one for date nights. My boyfriend also loves this one and I have lots of really good memories with it. So Victor and Ralph Flower Bomb, I don't care how overpopular it is. I don't care how cliche it is. This is incredible. I love it and I will always have it, I think. <laughs> I can't imagine not having this one, so. The next one that I grabbed is Valentino Donna Born in Roma and this one actually surprises me because this is fairly new-ish to my collection. Um, the lid doesn't ever want to stay on it. This is fairly new to my collection and I never would have thought that this would make it on a top 10 for life or a top 25 or anything like that but again this is such an easy reach you guys and I think the reason a lot of my more complex niche fragrances are not making it onto this tray is because even though they're incredible, they're not all necessarily easy easy to wear everyday type of perfumes, whereas a lot of the designer ones are easy to wear everyday perfumes. Um, so these are not necessarily what I would say are my best fragrances, but they're some of my easiest favorite fragrances. So yeah, Valentino Donna Born in Roma, there's something super, super sexy about this one as well. I really like it. Um, I actually remember smelling this when I was in Valentino, in, in the Valentino store when I was on vacation and I was buying a pair of shoes. And so I actually link the smell of this with that day and it makes this fragrance feel a little more bougie <laughs> because of that, even though I know it's a very common designer fragrance. Um, but I love this. This is sweet. This is easy to wear. It's a berry fragrance. There's some woody notes. There's vanilla, I believe. It goes over really well with the men as well. Boyfriend loves it. I mean, what can I say? This is just a really easy, really easy fragrance to reach for and I really adore it. So this is again one that when I run out, I would like a larger bottle and I think the bottle is really cute. So yeah, Valentino Donna Born in Roma. Okay, now for a niche. So we have Zerjoff Lira from the Cosmorati line, and I could have chosen so many gourmand fragrances. I have so many incredible gourmand fragrances. I have so many good vanillas that I could have chosen that didn't make it on today's tray, on this tray. Uh, the reason I chose Lyra is because this is probably one of the best gourmands I have, if not the best gourmand I have in my collection. I really, really enjoy wearing it. I could have chosen Montal Chocolate Greedy. I could have chosen Spiritueuse Double Vanille. Um, there's lots of like vanilla slash gourmands that would have been great, but I just went with Lyra because at this point it was getting so hard to pick and Lyra's just kind of a no-brainer. This is a um, citrusy vanilla caramel fragrance. It also has a teeny tiny bit of lavender in the opening. It's very relaxing, very calming. I love wearing this, you guys. I don't wear it enough. I don't wear any of them enough, to be honest. And this also has a little bit of a spicy kick in the middle, but nothing crazy. But it's just one of the most beautiful, relaxing, lovely, gourmand fragrances that I have. So yeah, I thought it was a good choice. <laughs> like I say, after you after you pick out your top, top favorite perfumes, you get to a point where all of the other ones are just a tie and it's very hard to pick. So thankfully I'm not actually doing this because I would not be able to pick. Like I couldn't just pick one vanilla or one gourmand. So yeah, Serge Aflira though was a pretty good choice. So the next one is actually kind of surprising for me and probably will be surprising to other people. And this is a newer acquisition. This is from Louis Vuitton and this is Coeur Vuitton. And this is a pear fresh floral fragrance for the summertime. It also has oak moss. It's a bit of a Chypre type of a fragrance. So if you like fragrances like Chloe Nomad, Coco Mademoiselle, those type of perfumes, you would probably really like this one. And I love this. This has a a little bit of a freshness, a little bit of a fruitiness, but it does have a lot of that oak moss and it also has some jasmine, I believe. This is a very, very classy perfume. Classy, beautiful, everyday, good performance. Smells incredible and when I was picking my perfumes, I noticed I had a lot of sort of evening, gourmand, heavier ones and I didn't have a lot of like fresh, everyday. So I figured I needed another fresh, everyday perfume and Courbetant would be like, my going to the office everyday type of perfume. Not that I go to, to an office, but this is like an everyday fragrance and it's amazing. So I really like Coeur Vuitton. Again, I could have chosen any of my Louis Vuittons, but this is the one that I went with. So the next one, you guys, some people are probably gonna think is a little bit ridiculous and some people might even roll their eyes, but this is Ariana Grande REM. So I love this fragrance, you guys, and I know that, yes, I'm leaving out a lot of incredible niche fragrances out of this list, and 
some people might think it crazy that I'm choosing an Ariana Grande over a Zerjoff, but you know what? I love this fragrance, you guys, and I'm actually really excited for winter to come in a sense because I really equate this perfume with cool winter nights, snow on the ground, and I'm inside my cozy warm house, cuddled up on the couch watching a movie with my partner, and I'm wearing this perfume. This is just such a relaxing, easy fragrance. It's a lavender gourmand, so it smells kind of sweet and gourmand, very feminine, but it also has a bit of a dryer sheet vibe, and I always tell people it almost has a bit of a boyfriend t-shirt smell. So I think that's why I love it so much. It just I don't know, it's just very comforting and cozy, and at the same time, there's a bit of a sexiness to it. There is a touch of a sexiness to this. I think this is a great intimate fragrance. I think there's salt in here as well. It kind of has that salty skin, lavender, gourmand thing going on, and I just love it, you guys. So again, this is one I could very easily have a large bottle of, because this is the type of perfume I could wear all the time. It's such an easy reach, such an easy comforting reach, and I really, really love it. So Ariana Grande, REM. And the next one, you guys, should not come as a surprise if you watch my channel. This is Armani Privé Blue Turquoise, and this is one of my best perfume purchases ever. This was also a blind purchase. I don't think it's a safe blind buy. I don't think there is such a safe thing, such a thing as a safe blind buy. So please try it if you can. But I absolutely love this perfume, you guys. This is a salt vanilla woody fragrance and it just makes me feel super sensual super feminine and very bougie very luxe so it has like almost a bit of a spa vibe to it but at the same time it just smells like a sensual woman and at the same time it's salty and it's floral and there's a bit of a sort of a um pine pine tree like foresty kind of a quality to it i believe there's cypri oil cypriol oil in here anyways it's amazing and i love it and yeah this one definitely was a no-brainer dumb reach 100 had to have it in today's list and my second last one is Coco Mademoiselle from Chanel. And this one was a pretty easy reach as well. I really love this one. And this is a very easy grab and go for daytime. Everybody knows Coco Mademoiselle. It's a subtly sweet um, orange rose patchouli fragrance. Beautiful. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say about Coco Mademoiselle, but this one I really do like. I don't wear it enough, but it is still one of my favorite perfumes and super classy, super posh, super bougie. Just a great everyday perfume. Yeah, Coco Mademoiselle would definitely be one of the ones I would want to keep. And finally, you guys, the last one that I chose was the original Delina. So again, I wanted a little bit more options for daytime, something that I could just grab and go for every day in the summertime because a lot of these perfumes here are nighttime or sexy or a little more gourmand or whatever. So I did want some more easy daytime reaches and I could have gone with so many again. I could have gone with Louis Vuitton A Trap Rev. I could have gone with Chanel Chance Eau de Parfum, but I went with the original Delina because I haven't given this one enough um, time to wear it and it's beautiful and it's just a gorgeous, um, you guys, I must be tired because <laughs> the words are not coming to me as easy tonight. This is a gorgeous musky rose fragrance. It's a little bit incensey. It has a little touch of vanilla. It's got lychee and rhubarb in the opening. So it has this kind of sour tart freshness that I love. And then this super unique blend of musk and vanilla and incense. And it's just incredible. One of the best perfumes I've ever smelled and you guys this one took me a minute to get on board with because when I first smelled this um, at the beginning of 2020 I didn't like it I just think I wasn't ready for niche it was one of the very first niche fragrances I've ever I had ever tried and I just wasn't ready for it it just wasn't what I was expecting now that I've had it a few or tried it a few times I absolutely love it and it yeah it's a pretty easy pretty easy choice for me actually so yeah that is Delina the original all right guys so those are the 20 fragrances that i chose and originally i was going to go with 25 i'm really glad that i didn't because actually 20 looks like more than enough and this is quite a large perfume tray um most people's perfume tray is quite a lot smaller this is like a large kind of a serving tray that i got from home sense and even you know ideally like most people's trays are even smaller than this you know like a normal person and yeah this this still looks like a lot of perfumes to me 
And yeah, this is nowhere near comprehensive. Like I say, I left out so many good perfumes and I'm so glad that I'm not actually doing this because I already am missing my other Zerjoffs and I'm missing my other Parfum de Marly and I'm missing all of my other niche fragrances that didn't make it onto this tray. I think that if you did narrow your collection down to 20 or 25, you're obviously gonna have more easy reaches, which I think means you're gonna have more quote unquote basic perfumes. You're gonna have more like designer mass pleasing because that's just the nature of it. If you can only have 20, they have to be something that you can wear a lot, which means you don't have as many unique ones. So I think that's why it looks the way it does quite basic if I can say so myself um like my basic easy reaches but I do love them so these are easily you guys some of my favorite favorite perfumes I guess and um yeah now I'm gonna go ahead and put them back <laughs> and yeah I hope you enjoyed watching today's video and I would love to hear down below if you could only keep a few fragrances which ones would you keep